Stayallday.com. Stay now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you're expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get to use those personal initiatives, which is the go get energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques on the umbrella one unified philosophy that's called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is why your presentation matters. Before we get into this, let me remind everybody I send out a text message every day, guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point. We also send one out every Monday for for the weekly version of a similar message. And I will I want you to be getting this message. All you have to do, if you agree with me that you want to get this message, is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. It's completely free of charge to text me. To be in my text community and as soon as you text me we'll tell you what your options are you have some choices as to how often you want to receive messages from us who knows maybe you might get tired of, of the work on your game message and you only want to get it once a week not every day either way you have options just text me at that number it's free of charge you'll be in my text community we go from there secondly work on your game university that's a place where i do all my coaching that's the only place i do any coaching you want to work with me directly that's the only way that it happens just go to work on your game university.com again work on your game university.com that link is down below in the description as well. If you want to work with me directly, that's the only way it can happen. Um, all that out the way, let's get into today's topic, which is why your presentation matters. So when I say presentation, I'm talking about all forms of presentation. When I say presentation, I mean any way in which another person who is not you can see you, hear you, experience you, and they get an impression of you. So when I say presentation, that can mean what they see, what they hear, what they uh, watch, what they read, what they feel, anything about you that allows another person to perceive your presence. So that's what I mean. The way you come across others, for others, to consume your, your being in any format, your being or anything that you have produced in any format. So this could be in person, this could be uh, online or anywhere else in between. And I'm going to explain how this affects what other people do or do not do regarding you. Uh, and if any of you thought that it didn't matter, oh, it absolutely does matter. It doesn't mean it needs to be one way. But it does matter. So let's talk about it. Point number one. Topic once again is why your presentation matters. Number one, your reputation precedes you. Has everybody heard that phrase before? Your reputation precedes you. When people have a certain impression of you, which is based on however you have been presented to them, whether it was you intentionally presenting yourself to them, or maybe they came across you somehow, somewhere. I mean, people come to me and they say, and I ask them, how did you find out about me? And say, well, I saw you on YouTube like six years ago. Or, or I heard you on somebody's podcast three weeks ago. Or I was searching through podcasts and I found yours. Or I, I've been on your email list for like 10 years, but I've never reached out to you till now. So people can come across you in a lot of different ways, especially in the world that we're in today where the internet is the internet, especially those of you who are content creators. You never know who is coming across your material at what time and what season of life it may be for them. And you may have the right message at the right time for them. Or the wrong message at the wrong time, especially when you're online. Because again, your material could be all over the place and you don't even know who's coming across your stuff. So I'm bringing up reputations to say this. Presentation is part of your reputation. Why? Because people begin formulating opinions about you before they even know who you are. Like how many of you who's a, a creator online, especially those of you who are online, but this happens offline as well. How many of you have ever come across a person who had a very strong opinion of you and what they thought you were or who they thought you were and you knew that they really didn't know you at all all they knew about you was maybe what they heard or what they saw or what they read but they had a really strong opinion about who you were whether it was positive or negative how many of you have had that experience everybody should be nodding their head because all of you have had that experience whether you know it or not okay all of us have a reputation in the minds of some other people who maybe they heard about us from someone else maybe they saw us somewhere Maybe they see you, but you don't notice them. Right? Any of you been in that situation where you could be in a space where a bunch of people notice your presence, but you don't quite notice them from the crowd of other people who are there. All right, to give you an example, I went to school at Penn State University. I graduated from uh, Penn State Altoona, which is one of the 23 branch campuses in Penn State. Penn State has a lot of, Penn State is what they call a PWI, stands for Predominantly White Institution, as opposed to an HBCU, which is a historically black college and, colleges and universities. I'm a 6'4 black guy. I was on a basketball team. So it wasn't, I mean, it was a, there was a solid black population at Penn State. And I'm very familiar with people who were at the State College campus. It was only about uh, 
45 minutes from Altoona at the time. And the Altoona campus is the second biggest campus. Two biggest campuses in the, in the system is Altoona and State College. So there was a solid black population on both campuses. However, that population was dwarfed by a number of white people who went to Penn State. I'm bringing all that up to say this, that there were many times when I would uh, engage with some white person, male or female, at Penn State who was very familiar with who I was. I had no idea who they were. And not because I'm some person who just wasn't uh, personable and didn't talk to people and know people and things like that. I did a, a lot of socializing in college. I would say it was my major besides basketball was socializing. But the point is, point being, because there were so many of them, i.e. white folks, and so few of us, relatively speaking, black folks, it was easier for them to notice me than it was for me to notice them because it was just so many of them. The whole point is I could have a reputation. They could have a thought about who I was in their mind, and I had no idea who they were simply because of numbers, just the sheer volume of people that some, some of them got lost in the sauce to me. You, you white people know you all look the same. Um, tongue in cheek, y'all get what I'm saying. Anybody who's offended by that, you ain't my audience anyway. The whole point being, people begin formulating opinions about you even when they don't really know you, it's just because they see you. They just see you around. They just got an opinion about you. Any of you who plays a sport, especially on a college or above level, there's a bunch of people who have opinions about you and you don't even know who they are. They got opinions about you because they see you in the game and they, they formulate an opinion about what type of person you are just by what you do on that court or that field and you have no idea that they even exist. You're walking down the street, for example, and this is, again, let me, let me back up. And this can all just be based on how you are presented to them. So if you're a public figure, any of you who's a public figure in any way, whether you're known in your community, whether you're known, you could be a public figure in your company. If you're working for a really big company, there could be people in the company who know about you, but you don't know about them simply because of the size of the company and your status within the company. There can be, if you play a sport, for example, all the fans who watch that sport have some opinion of you. They know exactly who you are, but you have no idea who they are. Uh, this happens all the time. Again, especially at the collegiate and the professional level. Just based on how you're presented, people start to formulate opinions. And we see this on social media all the time. An athlete goes and does something in the game, good or bad, and then a bunch of random people who that athlete will never meet all have really strong opinions about that person based on whether they did good or bad in the game, whether you're on the team they like or the team they hate. If you're walking down the street, another example, you see two guys in dark hoodies with their faces covered walking towards you. Do you have a different thought in your mind in that situation than if you saw two guys in business suits walking towards you? Of course you do. All of us have different responses to those two different situations. Two guys in hoodies with their faces covered, two guys with business suits on, and they're both walking towards you at the same pace, same size, same street, same time of day. You have a different response based on each one. Why? Because the presentation of each one triggers a different response in your mind. Now, some of you might cross the street. Some of you might walk right up to them. Some of you might turn around and run away. But you have a different response based on what you see. The presentation matters. Does everybody understand my point here? Your perception of other people is based on, or their perception of you, let's say, is based on your presentation. How you present yourself alters the perception that people have of you without, again, they don't have to know a single thing about you. Just what they can see. And people will make people will draw conclusions about others just based on small pieces of information and we all do this by the way now, i'm not just talking about other people we all do this we all make snap judgments and snap decisions about other people based on small pieces of information and often i wouldn't say most of you in this audience but often once people make that first decision about who you are it's very hard for them to break that idea in their minds now i would think you as a uh, critical thinker you're able to keep your opinions about people flexible. So even though your first impression might be one thing, once you learn more, you will be willing to change it. And again, I'm saying you as a member of this audience, I think you're that type of person. For you to look at other people with the exact same mindset would be foolish of you when uh, these two people I'm talking about, they, late at night, you're walking at night and you see the two people in hoodies or you see two people in suits, you're not looking at them the same way. And if you did, that'd be foolish of you. Why? Because they're giving you a different, they're both showing you something different. And you know what they say. When someone shows you who they are, believe them, right? So if someone's showing you something, you should take that into account. And you should not treat them the same as you would treat someone else who is showing you something completely different. All right, if someone's showing you uh, one type of energy, another person's showing you a completely different type of energy, you should not judge those people the same way. Why would you? That wouldn't make any sense. Would it? Would it make sense to you? Wouldn't make sense to me. Different presentations, folks, garner different responses. What does this have to do with your business, you may ask? Let me tell you. 
you are coming across to your audience, the way you come across to your audience, gives them an idea of who you are, what you're about, what you're not about, and what engagement they may or may not want to have with you. The way you present yourself is telling the audience who you are, what you want, and whether or not they're getting this to decide whether or not they want to go any further than where they've gone to this point. Now, while you cannot control other people's prejudgments, because people may just prejudge you just because you're a tall, short, black, white, male, female, et cetera, et cetera, where you're from, people can prejudge you based on those things and nothing you can do about it because you are who you are. Those are immutable characteristics. You can do your best to either fit into or fit out of whatever, whatever prior expectations your target audience may have about you. You can conform to those pre-expectations or at least what you think they are, or you can go completely outside of them and kind of break their brains by showing them something completely different than what they may be expecting. So I'll use myself as an example. Those of you who've been following me for at least, let's see, it's 2000, I'm recording this in late 2023. So those of you who've been following me for at least like, three plus years, you know that I used to walk around in t-shirt and shorts and Jordan sneakers pretty much every day. And when I did that, people would prejudge me as a basketball player. Now, this is my, I stopped playing basketball in 2015. So from 2015 through 2021-ish, 22-ish, people would see me and say, you like a basketball player. Well, I had been a basketball player, so I, I, never, I didn't take offense to the prejudgment. But at the same time, I knew that I was morphing into a different, uh, different phase of my life and business career. So I didn't want people looking at me as a basketball player because then I would have to kind of tear down the basketball player judgment that they had, the present, the, the idea they had of me as a basketball player, and I had to give them a different one because I wanted them to have a different idea. I felt as if, this is the judgment call that I made, that a different prejudging idea in the minds of other people would make it easier for me to do what I was doing now. So nowadays, as you're watching this on video, you see most of the time I'm walking around with a suit on. And people prejudge me now as some type of corporate executive or as an entrepreneur. This is what people say to me. Like, I thought you... Uh, I thought, what, what corporation do you work for? Are you a, are you a CEO? Is this the type of entrepreneur? What do you do? All right. Nobody asked me what I, most, most people would just assume that I play sports when I saw, when they saw me in the t-shirt and shorts and the basketball scene. They didn't ask me what I did. Now people always ask me what I do. And when I tell them, it kind of fits what they were expecting given the way that I present myself. And I, again, this is a judgment call by me. I'm not telling any of you who's an entrepreneur that you need to do what I do. Even if you're in the same line of work as me, you don't need to do this. This is just a judgment call that I made that I said this will grease the skids for people to already be in the frame of mind that I want them to be in. If and when we are to do any type of business, I want to look the part that I am playing and not look a part that I used to play. And again, personal call from me. You make the personal call for you. I'm just giving you the information. You do what you wish with it. Now, some of you may say, well, Dre, and this is basically I'm giving you this point after I gave you the disclaimer. But some of you may say, well, Dre doesn't matter what other people prejudge. doesn't matter what other people think of you. It's who you are as a person that matters the most. And I've had people, even when I explain that to them, I talk to people in person and explain to them what I just explained to you about why I changed my uh, normal style of dress. And people will say something like this. doesn't matter what other people think of you. It's what, who you are as a person that matters the most. On the contrary, I disagree with that. I believe it does matter how people prejudge you because it makes it that much easier or that much harder for you to get Whatever point you need to get across to them based on whatever prejudgments you either fit into or contradict based on their thinking. So if I'm going to show up in a room and I'm trying to influence people that I know something about basketball or playing basketball, I'm probably going to show up in my basketball player uniform. I'm going to look like a basketball player because now you're already I I am fitting the expectations of what you think a basketball player looks like. Now, if I show up in a suit. You're already you're looking at me as soon as I walk in the room with that suit on. I'm like, all right, this guy looks like some type of executive or entrepreneur or business person. And again, it doesn't mean a business person can't wear sneakers and T-shirts. And there are plenty of business people who do exactly that. But at the same time, you see somebody with a suit on. And I just showed you a picture of a guy with a suit on. And I said, what do you think this guy does for a living? What are you going to guess? You're not going to say basketball player. You're going to say this guy looks like he works in some type of corporation or he runs a business. He's some kind of executive, some type of entrepreneur. Why? Because that's the uniform. That's what we expect. If you're fitting the expectation. That presentation does matter. It plays a role in the prejudgment that other people make about you. Many of you have not read Robert Cialdini's books on influence and persuasion and persuasion. He talks about these things. These are real things and they do matter and they do play a role in people's subconscious uh, perception of what's going on around them. And it, it, every little thing plays a role. And there are plenty of experiments that show you this type of stuff that 
uh, leads to the way people think. It leads to the way people talk and the decisions that people make. These little persuasion things that can be placed all around in their worlds. And anyone who does anything like um, like design of an office, any of you who works in an office building, it, there are designers who work in offices that will do little subtle things that affect people subconsciously that lead them to making certain decisions and taking certain actions. There's a whole industry about this that most of you would never be consciously aware of, but this is a big thing. Again, I'm not telling you you need to do it. I'm just telling you what I did and why. So looking the part, folks, it matters. Depending on who you are aiming to influence, looking the part matters a lot. All right, this is why when you go to a job interview, uh, you don't show up in a t-shirt and shorts, do you? Why? Because you know that looking the part matters. Right? So the same people who would say to me, well, just because you put on a suit doesn't necessarily mean anything. I work at a company and nobody wears suits. So, okay, yeah, you work there. And so if they told you to wear a suit, what would you do? Uh, you either put a suit on or you get fired. So don't tell me where you work. Uh, I remember somebody made that comment. I posted a video on Instagram and some guy said, well, I work at a company that did whatever amount of money last year. And nobody wears a suit. He, I guess he called himself making a point. And I said back to him, mofo, you're an employee. So what if they told you to put a suit on Monday morning? What you going to do? Okay, then. So that, that was the end of that conversation. The whole point is, folks, that doesn't mean that a basketball player cannot wear a suit. Because we know that sometimes they do. Nor does it mean an entrepreneur can't wear a t-shirt with Steve Jobs, famous. There are plenty of examples of both. But when it comes to your presentation and other people's expectations, the look, looking the part matters, whether you like it or you don't. And you don't have to like it for it to be true. Remember, remember what we talked about, facts and not the truth. Number two, today's topic, once again, is why your presentation matters. Number two, presentation does the legwork that you don't have to do to filter out the wrong people and filter in the right people. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. When why I talk about, um, I emphasize point number one, why it matters so much, what I said there, why it matters so much, and how it can put a, play a big part in your business. Any of you who works in a business where, let's say, for example, any of you ever been to a business where they don't announce or list the prices? All right. Any of you have been to a restaurant where they don't put the prices on the menu? Any of you ever been to a business where you know you're going to pay something, but they don't tell you exactly what the price is? They just want to have a conversation, then they'll tell you the price. Any of you have been to a business like that or work at a place like that? You know what those people do that they consciously do, at least the ones that know what they're doing. They try to figure out what they can do to frame for people what the investment or the prices will be or will not be. See, most restaurants that don't list the prices, the prices are usually what compared to the average restaurant, usually higher than the average restaurant, right? Most business people who don't list their prices Usually the investment is higher than what you would invest in a place that does list the prices. Isn't that a, a general, is that a, a general truism? Most of you agree with that? Presentation is a big way that you do this. You are basically setting the table for people, letting them know that this is an investment and you can't just, this is not just a, a this is not McDonald's, all right? You can't just go find the prices on Google. Presentation is a big way of doing this. And it's not just, let me be clear. It's not just your personal presentation. It's not just about you putting on a suit or putting on a t-shirt. It is the way that your online materials look. This matters, okay? Those of you with websites, those of you with landing pages, the design of your online materials matters in the perception that people have and the expectation they have of what they're gonna to need to invest in order to get whatever it is that you're selling. It matters. The way that you talk and communicate in your emails, it matters. The way that your team or your staff or your chat bots communicate with prospects, it matters. What does it do? It paints a picture in people's minds of what they should expect from your business. If it's sloppy and it doesn't really look professional, whatever professional is in the minds of your prospects, not your mind, but the minds of your prospects, if it doesn't look professional, then people are going to have a lower expectation. If it looks really professional and it's very sharp, then people have a higher expectation. And you can play to those expectations. You can play off of those expectations for, you, for your own business benefit. But you have to understand this in order for it to work for you. When you go to a doctor and you got to deal with three levels of nurses before you get to talk to the one doctor after an hour in the in the building, that doctor has a higher level of cachet than the doctor who you can just walk in and talk to the doctor straight without going through anyone. That matters. All right, I know this. I remember I went to see a doctor. I told you this, you all this story. I gave you a story on a sham that's the American medical system. I went to go see this doctor. He's like this orthopedic expert. He's an orthopedic doctor for the Miami Heat. He's like the most renowned orthopedic, orthopedic doctor in Miami, allegedly. And I go to see this guy. I had to talk to like three. I go to his building where he is. I had to talk to one nurse number one, then nurse number two, then nurse number three. And 
Finally, the doctor comes in. I talked to this dude for like five minutes. And he told me what he was saying we were going to do, which I ended up not even doing. Then I left and had to pay for it. The entire visit cost like, I can't remember what this price was. It had to be like 500 bucks. I saw the doctor for literally like five minutes. And I had to go through three waves of nurses. But I expected when I went up to the counter and they were about to tell me how much it was, I was expecting it to be something around that just because of the presentation of the process. Everybody understand? I was expecting it. And I made a joke to the ladies at the desk. I said, man, I should have went to medical school. And they all laughed because they knew exactly what I was referring to. But the whole point is, <laughs> the whole point is the presentation, it framed in my mind, I know this is going to cost me uh, more than more than just a, uh, I don't know, what's something that would be cheaper. All right, this ain't uh, those little uh, emergency, emergency medical health offices that you see on the corner somewhere. I knew it wasn't going to be that. I know business people who will. These are people I know personally. They will not do business with a person who does not have an assistant. Now, you don't have an executive assistant or a personal assistant, some type of assistant working for you. It's just you doing everything. I know business people who will not do business with a person who doesn't have an assistant. Why? Because they say someone who doesn't have an assistant, they can't possibly be important enough for me to want to do business with them. There are people who think like this. Again, I'm not telling you you need to do it. I'm just telling you that this, this exists. This exists in the world. Now, I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm just letting you know that there are people who look at things this way. And again, this episode is literally about how people look at things. It's about presentation. It's not about your opinion of how they look at things. It's about how they look at things. I'm letting you know that this is true. I'm not asking you whether you agree or disagree, whether you think they're wrong or right. And frankly, folks, it doesn't matter what you think. What matters is this is how people are looking at things. And you need to make sure you're tailoring your presentation and your message to the people for whom if they see you, it fits what they're looking for. And you need to make sure you're filtering out the people for whom it does not fit what they're looking for. Make sure you don't uh, use up too many resources on the wrong people. Okay? Understand the difference. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why your presentation matters. Number three. Presentation tells people what to expect. Next time you go into, or hopefully you don't go in, you just walk by a McDonald's or a Burger King. And let's just say you're walking by because you shouldn't be going in. If you listen to this show, you shouldn't be eating at McDonald's or Burger King. I don't care how broke you are, how hungry you are. And you can find better quality food than McDonald's or Burger King. I don't care who you are. All right. Even if your kids want it, you can find better food for them too. All right. Next time you go buy one, just look in the window. All right. Don't go in. Look in the window. And look how it's set up. Look at the people sitting in there. Look at the food that they're eating. Get a feel for the energy of the space. Just by looking at the people and the place and all of that. Now, think about the last time you went into a high-end restaurant. To juxtapose or walk by a high-end restaurant maybe if this is not your taste and you wouldn't spend money there walk past a high-end restaurant look inside their dining room look at the people in that dining room look at the food that they're eating look at the presentation of that get a feel for that energy let me ask you a question between the high-end restaurant and the mcdonald's are they significantly different of course they are now let me ask you another question are the prices at each place significantly different of course they are even though you don't know the price in a high-end restaurant, you know the price at McDonald's, you don't know the price in a high-end restaurant because they might not even be on the menu. You don't know the price till they give you the bill, right? You can just tell by the energy and the perception of the presentation at each place that the prices in the restaurant are significantly higher than those inside of the McDonald's or the Burger King. Is this true or is it not? And, and all of you are saying yes right now, right? All right, I just proved to you that presentation matters because the presentation sets people up with an expectation. If you present yourself like a McDonald's, people don't expect to pay McDonald's prices. If you present yourself like a high-end restaurant, people don't expect to pay high-end restaurant prices. And guess what? People who are McDonald's buyers ain't walking into the high-end restaurants. You need to use none of your resources talking to them because they won't even show up. They're going to look at you and say, nope, not for me. They're going to go somewhere else, which is exactly what you want. And if you present yourself like a Burger King, the high-end restaurant customers, people who want to go to a high-end restaurant, they're going to look at you your Burger King presentation, and they're going to say, okay, this shit is like Burger King. I'm good. Let me go find a high-end restaurant. I'm not going in there. People who want to eat in a high-end restaurant don't go in Burger King. They don't even consider a Burger King. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? And those of you who are in sales, understand this. There are prospects. There are people out there who will spend money, clients and customers, who want to spend more money on higher-end stuff because that's just who they are. They are looking to spend more money on higher-end stuff. Every customer or client is not looking to save as much money as possible. Uh, so any of you who have thought that, perish the thought. That is not true. It is 100% false. So your presentation determines who even shows up at your door, let alone who ends up staying. 
Anybody understand what I'm saying here? The presentation of a thing prepares people for what's coming next. If you walk into a high-end restaurant and everybody on the staff is wearing a suit, and there's a certain ambiance of lighting, the, the, the tone of the restaurant, the feel, the energy, the sound, all of that, and people are conducting themselves a certain way, all of those things are preparing you for what? You know how much that bill is going to be. You know this ain't Burger King. All right, this ain't, this ain't going to be a McDonald's bill. Everybody get it? Good. Let's recap today's class, which is why your presentation matters. So when I say presentation here, I mean anything people can see, read, hear, or feel about you in any format. This could be your personal presentation or the materials that represent you, i.e. your website. Number one, your reputation precedes you. All right, the way you present yourself builds a reputation in the minds of other people and understand that people may be noticing you even when you do not notice them. This is especially important for those of you who are public figures and those, or those of you who may just be known simply because of your status more than somebody who is maybe lower status than you. So you might be known in your town by people who you don't know, but they know you. All right, you don't recognize them, but they recognize you simply because for whatever reason, you are very visible. Number two, presentation does the legwork that you don't have to do to filter out the wrong people and filter in the right people. All of you business people, you should be trying to do this on purpose, consistently. How can we present ourselves so that the wrong people do not show up at our door and the right people do show up at our door? Your presentation plays a role in whether this happens or it doesn't happen. Number three, presentation tells people what to expect. Next time you walk past a McDonald's, look inside there. Next time you walk past a high-end restaurant, look inside there. Is there a big difference between the two? Yes. If, at the bill, at the McDonald's and the bill at that high-end restaurant, is there a difference between those? Of course there is. I want you to understand the metaphor here when it comes to you, the way you present yourself right now in your business. And the bill you're able to pass to your clients and customers and prospects. Do you want a significant difference? Okay, then guess what? Your presentation plays a role in that. I'm not saying it's the whole thing, but it's a big part of it. And it determines who shows up at the door. Because if you're bringing a bunch of McDonald's people, but then you want to charge a high-end restaurant price, well, that's the reason why you're not able to get it. There's nothing wrong with your sales process. Not that you can't close simply because you're bringing the wrong prospects into the room in the first place. Because your presentation is attracting them. So any of you who's in business and you feel like all my clients and customers are broke, all my prospects are broke, they don't have any money, nobody wants to spend anything, nobody can buy what I'm selling. Well, who, who invited those people? Who attracted them in the first place with their presentation? You did. This is a problem you got to solve. You got a marketing issue here. There's nothing wrong with your sales process. Nothing wrong with those people either. Those are McDonald's customers and you're bringing them to a high-end restaurant and then expecting them to pay the bill. They can't pay it. You should have been sending them to the McDonald's in the first place. All right, that's the mistake that you made. Everybody got me? Text me, make sure you're in my text community. Get my number 305-384-6894 is down below in the description. Also, work on your game university.com. You want to work with me together, work with me, work with me directly. Then, and we'll be together, working together directly. Go to work on your game university.com. The link's down below in the description. Work on your game. Dre, all.